principles. So one of the best qualities we have really is if we are able to manage because we are born mothers, right? We are able, like you said, to multitask. I have four kids. I have I've never worked anywhere. I started with my first business, which is an IT training center. I was taking my kids there and juggling and taking care of my husband the way a northern Nigerian woman is supposed to do. And I still made it because I'm able to ask, I'm able to put things in boxes and say, okay, so this is work, this is, this is house. So this goes to house and this goes to work and somehow, somehow it meets somewhere, you, you know. So, and that's what we've done. And I encourage women in our, center to, in our centers to actually get married, have children. And then I, I don't give, I don't allow them to give excuses based on that. That is not an excuse. That is not a disease to have a husband and children. It is actually an additional skill that you bring into the, the job. So that's the kind of perception that we try to change when we're bringing. So it's in outsource, it's you really encourage for you to have children. I always ask them, when are you going to have, when are you <laughs> going to get married? Because I really want them to learn from me and my, the other people that are there that, you know, getting married and juggling with children, it's, it's, it's actually doesn't limit you. It actually aids you into being able to be this successful working woman. I don't know if I'm making sense. So. You're making sense, but I want to ask you, you've also raised a lot of questions. The first um, thing that I would say is, for me, the word perseverance is not one that I actually like. I think what you are saying is determination. I think that better describes it because when we talk about perseverance, we're talking about accepting that you are in a situation where you are suffering and deciding, I'm going to stay with this suffering. Whereas, I don't think that's what you're even doing. But Lola, could I, you not be tenacity? She's tenacious. So, tenacious. So, so we can, there are lots of words so, I think that yeah. we should use, but that perseverance, I don't know. So maybe, pers <laughs> okay, so maybe perseverance is not the word, you know, English is, is, is not my strong skills. <laughs> I'm from Your Kano. English is lovely. <laughs> so, and, so, were you, so, did yeah. you ever try to do that telemarketing? Because you know there's no shortage of people with American accents in Nigeria. No, there is no shortage. You know what I, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Lola, I remember interviewing a chap once who came for an audition. And he had this American accent, and I just said to him, oh, were you born in America? He says, no, I watch MTV. I was like, okay. Exactly. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite agents, he, he speaks with the Texan draw, you know? He speaks like a Texan. And I, uh, the first time I interviewed him, he was speaking with an accent. And I said, well, those are the first employees that we got into outsource. And I told him, we can't, we can't really employ you because I needed to prove that we're better than India and the accent is what I need. So he said, fine, give me three months and I will come back. So two months later, he sent me a text message and said, mom, I'm ready. So, so, so he came and he was speaking with the text and draw, you know, and I was like, what happened? He said, I was watching Walker, Texas Ranger all this while, and I came back, and I, and he's actually very good. He got promoted, he, he spoke really well, uh, and later on he was pushed into our legal services, because when you spend, some of them come in at customer service, and then they get pushed to other professional, uh, services and he is now a lawyer working with the, the US market. So yeah, we do have shortage of. They can Nigerians when they need a job, they can do anything. I have seen it. You know, the moment I say this is not working, they will just tell me, give me time. It will work. <laughs> <laughs> this it's the thing that you know when people describe us all over the world and they say Nigerians are this, Nigerians are, are that. It's just, they're just so adaptable, you know? And I, again, it's that same determination. Um, but there's another thing that I, I, I want to ask both of you, because you said something earlier 
about how sometimes you ask um, women, you know, when are they going to get married or when are they going to have kids? And I can understand that because it's actually coming from culture. It's 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 the culture that that you know that that you know you're kind of comfortable with. But I wanted to ask them that in a situation where one of your employees doesn't want to get married or have children or doesn't consider it to, to be a priority. I mean, how do you deal with that situation? Well, most of the time, uh, okay, the time, why I ask this question all the time, I wanted them to feel that it's okay. So you are in a leading role, doesn't mean that you should think twice about getting married because you don't want to lose that role. So I ask all the time to make sure that they know that it's okay by me if they pursue that. But of course, if they don't want to, it's all fine and good. But what I want them to do is be able to look at that, if that is what they want to do, and feel comfortable doing it. You know, but of course, if they don't want to do, then it's fine and good. So okay, so it's really just a question anything. of, I mean, reinforcing that their jobs are secure, yes, exactly. so that they don't feel because you know they they say that there's some um, employers in Nigeria that when you get married, if you are pregnant, you have to be wearing girdle, a girdle for about six months, so that you know because once you're pregnant, then they don't want to to have you anymore. So so the the question I want to to ask, I'm going to kind of ask it in a different way is how much does, um, what, what kind of role does what we understand as our culture, what does that, how, what, what role does that play in your leadership style? Because you're both CEOs. I'm the only person on this stage that's not a CEO. Yeah, I thought you were. I feel slightly intimidated. <laughs> the CEO sandwich. <laughs> Don't mind, Lolo. <laughs> um, I think one thing that I preach is that we must be culturally aware at all times. We can't ignore our culture or the cultures of other societies that we go into. It's important to respect them. But I think what is important is to create your own within that. So as much as I know I live in a society that is still mainly um, there is a place for women, so to speak. Um, I'm aware of that, but I still find a way within all of that to do the things that I need to do. So if, for example, now I need to go down on both my knees to beg somebody for something because it's going to get my job done, Lola, I'll do it all. <laughs> you understand? So people have even called me actress. At times, I will even cry to get what I want. So it really depends on the situation. The most important thing for me is never take my eye off what it is that I want to achieve. Yes, there are certain things that some women in our society have, they have said we have done to achieve certain things. I won't go into that, but I won't do that. No, I think we should go into it because well, that was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, what well, do you say The thing to is that you get approached. I mean, you know, we live in a society whereby, you know, people will try all sorts of things with you. You know, they will try. But I think... What, not at your level. Not at my age or my level. People are still trying all sorts of things uh, with you. Sometimes they're even younger okay. than I am. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> So um, you, 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 you kind of take those things in your stride. And it's very important for women to be firm and to be strong and to stand your ground and to communicate eye to eye with that person and to let them know that, unfortunately, can we go back to the reason why I'm here? Yeah, what, what you know? do you say to, to people who say, you know, Moabudu is Moabudu because she she slept her way to her position. Uh, yeah, you, know, you know that sort do, of. Do you, know, do you know what I say? To say it all no, let me let me, let me women. let me say that people that say that sometimes other women say that, yes. and other women say that unfortunately because that is the only thing they know how to do. People can only judge you by their own standards. You know, 
So when a woman wakes up and says, I slept my way there, she can't imagine. This project in, in, in VI that we've done, you know from the beginning, it's taking us two years. My PA is there, she knows the sleepless nights we've had. She knows we were sleeping and allows her to get the approval, to break ground, to raise the money. We know what we went through. So instead of you asking me, maybe how did I do it? If you think I slept my way into a project that is millions of dollars, well, I must be really good. <laughs> I love that. That takes some skill. Some skill. <laughs> I mean, what, what's your, have you ever encountered that? Because it, people say it quite a bit, like in the South. Does, do people say that about successful women who are in leadership roles in Northern Nigeria? Oh, well, there, there are very few. You know, women in, in leadership in, roles in, in, in northern leadership, Nigeria, in business in northern Nigeria. But what I do know is it's very hard for you to find somebody to take you seriously, right? And yes, whenever you're successful, people put you in that bracket that this is what she did, she must have done this or that, right? Well, because for me, my market is not here in Nigeria, I was able to be quiet under the, the, the radar for a long time before recently US government started promoting me and then people got to even know about what we're doing. So I, um, I was able to get shielded because of that. But I'm very sure if I'm a player in this market, that would, would definitely be the same situation. Somebody is definitely going to say that. I'm, I'm very sure some of them are saying that already, so you, so you never know. But the, 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 I thought initially that the problem of men taking you seriously, of people taking you seriously, when you're, you're trying to tell them about a business idea or what you're doing, uh, is the matter of the North. Then I later found out when I met the owner of Main One that it's, it's everywhere, you know. So have it takes, we have to work twice or 100 times harder times. Mm. to be able to prove ourselves. So it takes, you know, it takes me to employ like 350 people before, before I was taken seriously. Mm. Even now with 850, somebody would ask me, did you school abroad? No. Did, uh, I went for a meeting with one of my uh, our Canadian colleagues and somebody gave him a seat and said it's only for the bosses. And uh, so I sat down on the one seat they provided for the meeting and somebody came to whisper, but you're your boss. <laughs> and I whispered back, I am the, the boss. boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, so yes, you encounter that. Sometimes you, get, you allow it to get to you, and sometimes it affects you because you're still, I'm still three years old, right, uh, in the business. But I, I'm still, I always have to remind myself when I'm going there. You are who you are. You have done all those things. So it doesn't matter how they look at you. So, so I have to mostly ignore certain comments, mm. you know, just because I, I have to always remind myself. Yeah. So I have to learn from you, and I've watched your show from the beginning to the end. It's what you're doing, I have to say this, is amazing, because whenever I look at you, and I look at what you're doing, I always tell myself, I have to have this confidence, I have to do this, I have to, you know, so you have no idea how you're reaching a lot of people like me, you know, oh, you, in the Emma. north, you know. So I keep on saying, okay, if she can do it, you're visible. So if she can do it, then I can also, you know. Thank you so much for your kind words. Isn't that amazing? Oh, it's amazing. You see the kind of impact but, you've but, had. But, but Lola, that's the thing. That's the, why we, there is an ecosystem of women now that are connecting, that are successful, because they know, you know, 
what it takes. You know what it takes. So there are women out there that know. And together, there, there are support groups now. People, so, and that we need to do more of that. The people that are doing the talking are actually the people that don't have much to do. Um, so they have a lot of time to talk. We're busy working. We're busy working, so we don't have that much time. You know, so that's the difference. And people do respect what we do. I mean, it's not the majority of people that are saying these things, but it's just that we're talking about some of these realities in our, you know, in our culture. But a lot of women are supporting each other today, and I get a lot of support from other women saying, whatever I can do to support you, to help you, advise this, introduce you to people. I mean, a lot of happens as well. So we have to, you know, so we're going to have to connect, connect somehow. We're going to have to connect. That's it. It's, it's really important because yes. for me, like you were saying, I work with a whole load of young women as well. And me, I just love it mm -hmm. because they're generally up for work. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of ready. Mm -hmm. Um, the, my guys are good as well, but the girls, there's just a certain energy that one can also feed off. Do you, do you get that sense, especially with younger women? And then do you feel some sort of responsibility, as in you have to behave in a certain way because you want to set a really good example for them? Do you, do you feel like a role model? Yeah, 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 definitely. I, that, that's, that's one of the things I stand for, right? I feel that how we behave, and how we succeed and how we carry ourselves and how we take certain decisions also impact on the young women coming, coming, <laughs> coming up. And what we've noticed is actually different now. A lot of young women are coming up. A lot of young entrepreneurs are coming up. They need a lot of mentorship. Of course, you're, you're very visible, so you're able to impact in a lot. For me, in northern Nigeria, there aren't people like me. So I know that within the eight years that I was try trying to establish outsource, the things that I have faced, the kind of investors I've gotten, the, the way I was pushed out of my business, and things like that. So whenever I see them, I always try to bring them closer to me because I know exactly what they're going through. And I'm able to tell them, okay, this is this, this is this. The, these are the mistakes that I've made. You can't afford to make these mistakes because three years down the line, it's coming to hurt you. Yeah. Then don't care what people say. Just as long as you know, you can remain conservative. I am very conservative. I'm very religious. Uh, you can have it all. You know, don't be afraid to come out because sometimes a lot of ladies in northern Nigeria cannot, whenever they come out to be entrepreneurs, then they leave what they believe in just to make sure that they succeed. They feel that that's a shortcoming. So I always encourage them, you can be who you are, Whoever you choose to be, you can be that and still achieve whatever you want to achieve. All you need to do is believe that you can have it all, but it all starts from your heart where you, <laughs> where you put it. So, so, so absolutely. That's like um, yeah. reminding people to be true to, to themselves. themselves. Don't, don't tr kind of try change your behavior because you're trying to fit into a certain you know, box or mold. I mean, do you do you see yourself as a as a role model? Don't worry, people. Don't 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 worry. I'm coming to you now. Let me enjoy them. <laughs> um, well, I do, and and I think it's a two-sided coin because I send emails at 4 a.m. in the morning, 5 a.m. in the morning, and um, you know, a lot of my staff are probably maybe they're just about to get out of bed at that time. But you know, it's just to say that some of them do respond. They know that okay. I'm a bit of a workaholic. Some of them call me slave driver. They call me all kinds of names, which is fine. Um, but the most important thing is that I'm very clear about the things that I need to achieve. I have a great team that I work with, and they know that I do. I don't just, I'm not the kind of CEO that sits back and says, oh, you guys do the work while I sit. No. So they know I do. So because they know I do, they, they too know they have to do now. They have ah, to do. I it's, can't be doing and you're sitting around. No. Uh -uh. Ah, so, you're the old guy, you are working. I'm working. But I do the same thing with yeah. my stuff. I send messages on yeah. WhatsApp at 3 a.m. So just when you wake me. up, you will see it. They don't even answer. It's like, I imagine, the because you know, they have their own group, their own messaging WhatsApp group yeah. outside the one I'm part uh, of. So I'm sure so they're I'm sure there. They say, see this woman, woman who, she no. talking Does she to think I don't have a life? She you thinks know? I don't have a life. <laughs> <laughs> if she wants, let her be turning on her own. I'll be. <laughs> 
All right, so we're gonna open it up um, and see, does anybody have a question? Let's see, okay, we're gonna take this lady here. Um, and then we'll come to you, Nemesiri. And then we'll come to you. Okay, let's just take those three. Where's the mic? Prince. If it was a woman princess doing this job now, no. we won't be in this situation. <laughs> eh? Maybe Poor if I guy. start calling him princess, he will work better. Princess, bring the mic. Okay, could you come and use mine, please? Um, hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Sin, I run Sin City NG. Uh, my question is to Mo. I've heard a lot of things about Mo. Um, basically, she said something, she said slave driver. And I noticed that those who work with me too, they call me slave driver. And when they call us slave drivers, it's basically because we are putting all our energy, working, and they call us all different, I mean, people, they call me dragon, you know, they call me. So how do you manage that? Do you kick them out? Do you? Uh, cuddle them. How do you manage that when you're a woman that has a strong personality and people can't see that you are putting your best to that? So how do you manage that? Um, I think over the years I've learned to be many things, you know, and maybe I have a split personality because one minute I'm screaming and the next minute I'm going to, you know, say, oh, well, am I being, you know, so what is important is that at that point of we've got to get it done, we've got to get it done. So I think it's just having the ability to be many things you know, you're gonna have to learn to love your staff. I mean, for me, we'll go out together, we'll have lunch, we'll have dinner, we'll chat, we'll do all the stuff that we do as a family and as friends. And then there's going to be the fact that we need to also get the work done. So I think it's about people understanding you and being able to read you and knowing that you are sin sincerity more than anything is important. They need to know that you're sincere. They need to know that you really, really want this thing to succeed. So as often as you can, like if you've just had a screaming match with a member of your staff, I suggest soon after, call them in and I'm sorry. I, never be too proud to say sorry. You know, I'm sorry, but you know, this is really important to us. We need to get this done. And share your pain with your staff. It's really important for them to know that if you're feeling pain or if things are challenging or whatever the situation is, you have to carry them along. You still have to appear strong. Let them know you're in charge. That listen, I'm gonna solve this problem, but please, this is where we are. Let's just find a way to make it work. So it's about you being their friend, their sister, their mother. Some of them call me mama, fine, you know. So it's about you being everything that you can be to the people that you work with because you spend more time with them than even your family at home, really. So I, I, I agree with you, but it's, I think the other, she's also asking about the other side. So you're saying you get to know your staff, um, you know, you, they, if, if you expect them to understand you, mm. right, then um, as a boss, you also kind of have a responsibility to understand them. Absolutely. And if they are not able to give you what you need to succeed in your job, mm -hmm. do they really have any business being... Of course not. You know, working uh, for you. Of, of course not. I mean, at that point, I mean, I think the Pareto principle will always operate in that 20% of the exactly. people are going to do 80% of the work at any given time, no matter what situation you're in. And there are some people that are just warming the chairs and doing the minimum amount of work they need to do. And you have those that are really pushing forward. Um, but I think if it's at a point of whereby they're not contributing, you, I mean, I have a head of HR. It doesn't take long. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give them a nice warning letter. One, two, three. After three, be on your bike. Bye-bye. What, what, what about you? No, the same thing. What, what I've discovered is when she was talking, she said being, we manage like the way mothers manage their children. So you scold when it's time to scold. You love when it's time to love. But then at the end of the day, it's all about what are you there for? And then that has to be achieved, right? So for us, what we've done is we put it in data, in data form. So delivery is being monitored month on month. So we have scorecards. 
right? So you have to have the highest rating to actually exist. That constantly improve is not just delivering the work, it's constantly improving on it because we're trying to beat every market. As the other markets are reacting to competition, we are also reacting to competition. So we have to keep on raising the bar. So, and for us to raise the bar, we have to put like a scorecard. So you have to have a report sheet at the end of the month. At the end of three months, if your report sheet is looking, you yourself know that you don't have to get a letter from HR. You just have to pack your bag and go. So, so, so that's, that's the model that we put in place. Because and, you yeah. know what? Um, I think the other thing is that when you're a female boss, you are also slightly nervous about being firm because people expect you to have that maternal, oh, okay, I understand your issues. But there are times when I don't even want to understand any issues. <laughs> yeah. That's the situation because I just want results. So sometimes when you're a female, when you're a, woman, a boss, and, but you're a female, there's that added burden of, of being nice. I don't know about that. I don't know. <laughs> Of, of being forgiving, then do you understand? Mm. You don't. You, you don't think you then suffer that. that. You don't. That's why I wanna be like you when I grow up. Next question, please. So, okay. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. All right, so I realize that when men are asked questions about their business, they don't say despite the fact that they have a family. They don't say that in spite of uh, the fact that they have a family, they are still able to like, um, work and do stuff. But I realized that when you were, saying, you, know, you were talking, you talked about your family, that you were able to multitask. So I'd like to see mar marriage as a kind of partnership. So in what ways is your husband helping so that having a family isn't um, so much of a burden that it keeps you from actually putting out as much as you would if you had no family? The question is to me. Uh, so, so I'm, I actually am very lucky to have a very good supportive husband. I wouldn't even continue my education if not because of him, because I got married at a very young age, and then I went into university, and I was given the course that I wanted to study medicine, and I was given business admin. So I wasn't interested in what I was actually learning, and he kept on forcing me to learn and even when uh, after I finished university and I was trying to find my way around he kept on asking me what do you want to do with your life what, what do you want to do with your life so it got me thinking I did basic computer skills and here I am so I'm able to actually achieve this because I'm coming from the north so it's it's actually different from most I'm able to do that because he was he is really supportive he keeps on pushing me when I fail uh, he encourages me to get up and keep on trying so I've, I've never thought of giving up really because all the time when I feel myself and him sit down and find the reason why and try to do it together so I, I'm able to achieve that and one of the reasons why when a woman gets up and say because I have a family is because we want to be good role models to other women to say you can actually have that and do whatever it is that you want to do so 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 it's the the that is the reason why we always get up and say we we've achieved this despite the fact that we have families i don't know if you can yeah i mean that. the reason why men don't talk about it is because they don't really raise the family <laughs> So what are they going to say? I mean, they literally go to work. Some provide for their families financially. And I'm not saying they're not supportive. You know, my ex-husband is a fantastic father. He loves his kids. It's wonderful. But what I'm saying is that at the end of the day, the person that's really thrust with the responsibility, if anyone is going to call, if they're going to call from school to say, oh, there's something wrong with it, most of the time they're going to call the mother. You know, you're the one that's going to drop off your children at school or pick them up or make the necessary arrangements. So the reason why women talk about it is because they are, they are responsible for it. And the men don't talk about it because they're not really responsible for the execution on a day-to-day -day basis of 
making sure there's, you know, the food is cooked or the kids have a packed lunch or the kids have a uniform or they've got pocket money or do they have their pocket money or have they done their homework, you know, and have they employed the right nanny? I mean, it's, men don't do all that, do they? Men? <laughs> no, they don't. But, but one has to, one has to, we have to, I guess, get to the point where um, we, when we talk about our work, we constantly kind of reference family life and additional responsibilities. I mean, when I hear that, it just makes me think, goodness me, the stuff women have to juggle, you know, it's, it's, it's huge. And it just makes me think, you know, this, it, it makes me think of the word perseverance. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You know what I mean, because you're just in that situation no thinking, Lord. And then also the kids know that they, do. they, they, they come do. to you. It doesn't matter how busy I am, yeah. my kids know how to disturb me. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, and you just take it as part of your responsibility that it's okay, you find time for them. Should it change? Should it be no, different? I, I wouldn't want and it to be. And do you think it, it, sh it could be different? You know, there's a thing about being pregnant and having a child that a man can never understand. But do you realize what you are saying mm -hmm. is that a man doesn't have, you, you, you can't trust a man, that's what you're well, saying. I don't know, I'm just saying, Lola, that you're asking me what do I think, and no, I'm telling you that I'm the one that's pregnant useless. now, I'm the one that had the child, I'm the one that breastfed the child, so I have, I'm going to definitely feel a sense, a more sense of nurturing and responsibility to the child because the child is literally came out of my womb. I'm sorry to say, but that's what happened. And even yes. when the child is not even yours, even some of my friends and their children, I'm just as close to them. So it, even if you adopt a child, yes. somehow there is just still that mothering thing that God has given us that, Lola, and we can't do away with it. Is it, is, it, it is part of who we I are. I still feel that that we've, it's an inherited, F I still think it's almost genetic, um, born of the fact that for thousands of years, women have been nervous about leaving their children in the hands of yes. men. Yes. Not you, hands you know of men, I mean? but I mean, generally, when I first took my daughter to the childminder in England, because before we came back, she was three, and the first day that I dropped her off, I was like, oh my God. This is a stranger mm. in a way. Okay, you've done all the checks and everything. But what do you do? You have to, at some point, get on with your life. You come back to Nigeria, same thing. You know, you have to employ staff to support you while you go out and work. Yeah. What do you do? Okay. Okay. Accepted? <laughs> no. <laughs> Accepted. But we can agree. Well, I mean, do you, do you agree? I, I totally agree with her. I don't want things to change. I think the natural way mm. of life is that mothers are mothers. mothers. And you, we have to continue being mothers. Of course, we want things to change in the sense that we want men to be more responsible and yes. help us more, you know. Uh, but I don't think any woman will want things to change. Lola sitting here, you should see, her with, you should see her with her kids. Oh. You should see Lola with her kids, don't mind her. No, me, I'm just saying I'm persevering. Yes, we all are. We're all persevering. That's all I'm saying. We're all persevering. I'm saying, no, do you understand? I, of course I love my kids and I'm, I'm serious about yes, the I know fact you that I, a lot of the reason why I do what I do is I really cannot trust their father with them. It, it's because just he's the a man. Truth. Because I feel that he's slightly limited because he's a man. Yeah, they are limited. They may not be just, able to cook. I mean, my husband, husband says he can cook, but maybe like corned beef stew or something. But see, they're limited. Right. So they're limited. Mine can't is, even yeah. make uh, yeah. sweet and sour uh -huh. or anything no, like mine that. Mine does not even the way, knows, he doesn't even know the way to the kitchen. Uh -huh. he, he can't so even we have varying degrees of they can't cook. <laughs> so the kids are going to starve to death, aren't they? Well, <laughs> there's always chicken republic. There. <laughs> The, the, somebody else had a question. How are we doing for time, by the way? Time. Somebody else. There was another lady. Oh, okay. Oh, there oh, you yes. go. Thank you. Um, my question is um, pertaining to the topic of the discussion, which is the changing... Um, 
the changing shape of corporate Africa. So um, as an entrepreneur or as a businesswoman, where do you think the balance lies? You know, there's a lot of conversation around, oh, you ought to do this, or you, you need to juggle all of that, the family life, and um, having a job, having people that work with you and all of that. But then as a woman, as much as there is the maternal side of things, there's also the tendency of women in this corporate world to, I don't want to say slave masters, but to draw it and stretch it to like a, a very thin level. So if we are emerging and getting better, the question now is how do we draw the line to say there is, you're demanding too much and you're expecting way more than should be delivered at, at that time. Um, I, I don't understand the question. Well, okay. From what she said, the bit that I understand is that you're saying that maybe female CEOs are demanding too much of their staff. Is that's that yes. what you're saying? Yes. Okay. More than Not male CEOs? No, 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 no. Not comparing, but I'm saying focusing on the on the other on the on, on the, the other responsibilities gender. that females have. Yes. Okay. Are we are we now saying that in the corporate world there's there's a certain expectation that regardless of what it is what whatever is required you need to deliver. My question now is where do we draw the line and say okay you're stretching it too thin. Basically how how do 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 um, female in le females okay, in leadership so roles cope with the pressure? How do no, what she's saying is, how do female CEOs cope with the pressure of their female staff yes. that may be slightly, maybe they're pregnant or they're having issues or, or they have a child at home or whatever. Things like that, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think there's any cut and paste solution. I think you take each situation for what it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, I haven't employed any member of staff um, during pregnancy, for example. Maybe they've joined us before they were pregnant, which means that they've always worked pretty hard and well. So if they're suddenly, if they're now pregnant and they have to take days off or they have to attend to their child because they've had the child, you have to give them the flexibility to be able to do those things. I think I've, I always have and I think I always will. Um, there's no way that you won't be limited, but if it becomes a continual thing, I do have some stuff and I say, listen, do you want to work part time? Maybe part time will solve the issue. Because I, as a female boss, I'm conscious of the fact that there, there, there can be issues to be dealt with. And I can't expect you to do something that you are not capable of doing. No, I think that's unreasonable. Does that answer your question? OK. Uh, can we come to this lady? And then I'm going to go to the back. We've only got, uh, we've got about eight minutes. Very quickly, please. Hi. My question is kind of related. It's um, how do you handle sexual harassment cases? You mean when you are being sexually no, harassed no, 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 no. or Sorry. where Your a member staff, of staff yes. um, is being sexually harassed by another member of staff? Yes, something, yeah. Okay. Just shoot I'm, them. I'm going to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, so this is a very simple case. So, so for outsource, there are certain things that we have zero tolerance for, and that's one of them. Honesty and integrity is one. That is one, so it's automatic dismissal. Once there is a case, we ascertain the case, we look at the case, and once it is established, it's a go. Spot on, I agree. Let's move on because of time, right? Okay. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, got it? Okay. I need a male hand just so that people don't. I haven't had any male questions. Though. I don't know, that's how they be doing. Oh, yeah, that one at the back. There you go. They are afraid of us, don't worry. <laughs> Hi. Um, my question is, as things stand now, the world is moving into um, what they're calling basically the third industrial revolution, right? And for us, or the fourth, okay. <laughs> and for us who are still kind of um, plugged into kind of a, the second industrial revolution in Africa, in terms of our infrastructure at least, um, how do you see, what, like, what, what do you think like, the most viable opportunities are for young entrepreneurs looking to the future, at least like looking to the next 30 years, like where are the most viable um, opportunities? So, I know that service sector 
I, I was told, I, I read a research somewhere last week that by the year, I can't remember the year, but 80% of employment is going to be in the service sector. So, so I think if you're looking to be an entrepreneur, that is an area you should look at. Another area is technology because the whole world has, has is, when you look at Africa, there's a little bit of deficiency in that line. So if you're able to look at, you want to be an entrepreneur, you can look at IT and technology. Because of IT, I'm able to think from, I'm from Northern Nigeria, born and brought up in Kano. I've never schooled outside Nigeria. I'm able to see the world and see what I could offer the world. So I think I would advise on technology. Um, more. I, I would just add to that by saying that for me, I've always seen Nigeria as the land of opportunity. So every time I see a challenge, I just, it, for me, challenge equals opportunity. So it's saying, how can I take this particular thing that is missing in my society, how can I fix it, how can I add value, then how can I monetize it? So every time you see a disadvantage, it's really about turning that disadvantage into advantage and finding opportunity and create opportunity within it. Absolutely. That's, that's Absolutely. fantastic. Uh, yes, over here. We've got five minutes. Um, and my question is for Alma. I, as a Nigerian creative, we are constantly um, and out on outsourcing. Um, um, outsourcing companies like Fiverr, um, Upwork, they always make us um, have to change ourselves. Like going with the team of Black Bodies, Grey Matter, we always have to. Um, for example, some people will tell you if you want to register on Fiverr, get someone in the U.S. to open a PayPal account for you, do this. And I see that I um, outsource your company, um, makes us, and you said that your employees have to speak American accents. What is wrong with, like, why is there emphasis on the American accent? I think that's making us, how do I put it, um, go out of, um, make ourselves fit into um, being American, not like, not being Nigerian. Okay, so, so there's nothing wrong with speaking with Nigerian clients, right? But you have to look at the need of the client, the need and requirement of that client. So when, when their clients call them, they, they assume that the call center is in their centers, right? They assume that we are in America, so they call and say, oh, the weather, the weather in Boston is very, very cold today. So they actually, because of the market we are trying to reach out and the client's requirements, so we fit into that. There are some clients that would tell you, we really don't care about the accent. What we care about is be able to understand your own people. So people in medical records, we push them to that. We really don't want to change ourselves. We love being Nigerians and we love speaking the way we speak. But then we have to serve the clients according to their own needs, and that's one of their needs. And I yeah. think one of the most important things about being a, a successful entrepreneur, especially if you're a woman, is to understand how to be adaptable. Absolutely. You have to be dynamic, you know? Uh, should we take one last question? There's a man at the front. Uh, okay, give him. <laughs> Just like that. Make your question and only eight words. <laughs> well, that is so. I don't expect you to give me an answer, but it's because it's hopefully something you want to see happen in the next, um, in the next ten years, so to speak. If you were to give us an advice as men, right now, what would it be? That's a, such an important question. If we could advise men, should we say young men? Yeah. yeah? What advice would you